All right, first let's just talk about heating and cooling um, and we're going to talk about specifically water. Okay, so let's first talk about what's happening um, at each portion of the graph. So first I'll just give you a little background on the graph. So um, you have an increase in temperature at the bottom on one and then on section two you have no change in temperature and then three there's another change in temperature from zero to a hundred and then four again no change in temperature and then five um, another change in temperature at these sections where there's no change in temperature energy is still being added okay so that's something that's good to keep in mind all right now this is a great little um, animation of what's going on during a heating curve so first you have ice warming up from 15 to 0 so this is solid down here that's heating up then you have another fl uh, flat line, the first flat line, that's going to be a phase change. This is the phase change between solid and liquid. So at this point, you have a change of state. Then again, you have increase in temperature. This is liquid water that is being warmed up. And then again, you have a um, no change in temperature on another flat line. That's another phase change from uh, liquid to um, gas. And then lastly, you have only gas, and now it's just being heated. Okay, so that is what you have at each portion. All right, here's a different way to look at it. If you just ignore the um, little weird letters and just focus on the states and the molecular level, you see that at first we have a solid. They're all um, very ordered, very compact. First uh, flat line, you have a transition between the solid state and then going to liquid. The big diagonal line, you have all liquid that is being um, heated up, so they can slide past one another at this point, the molecules. And then you have another transition, so now we have some liquid going to gas. And then lastly, you have just gas. All right, so when a substance melts, boils, or is warmed up, the energy is being absorbed or gained. So we're talking about going from solid to liquid to gas and even to plasma, okay? so going up you are absorbing energy to go um, to go from a lower state to a higher state remember these all have low energy and uh, these all have higher energy up here so it increases going this way so you have to get more energy these are endothermic processes because you are adding extra energy now if a substance condenses freeze or cools down the energy is released or lost so going from liquid to solid or gas to liquid or plasma to gas okay you are going from high energy to low energy okay so you're gonna have excess energy when you're making these transitions and you're going to release it and that is an exothermic um, process all right, so specific heat capacity is something that we're going to utilize to help us determine what's going on on particular portions of the graph. All right, so specific heat is basically the amount of energy needed to heat one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So it's different for every substance, and it's also different um, for each state of matter that a substance can have. So what portions of the graph would specific heat values help us? Well, hopefully you said the portions of the graph where we have a specific substance, specific state of matter, and that specific state of matter is being heated and um, the temperature is increasing. So the portions where the temperature is increasing are going to be 1, 3, and 5, the diagonal portions of the graph. All right, so on those portions, we're going to be able to use Q equal MC delta T, C being specific heat which we just talked about. Um, specific heat can have two different uh, units. You can either have joules per gram degree Celsius or kilojoules per gram degree Celsius. Based on what your specific heat is in, we'll determine what your unit for Q is. Q is the energy or the heat that you lose or gain. And again, based on what your specific heats were in, it'll be either in joules or kilojoules. M is mass in grams. Um, and then we already covered C, and then delta T is the temperature change, and it can be in degrees Celsius or in Kelvin. So basically, when I say delta T, you need to be thinking T final minus T initial, okay? Because that's what delta T means. 
All right, here's an example. So if water has a specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, this means it takes 4.184 joules to heat one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So how much energy would it take to heat 10 grams of water one degree Celsius? Well, we know that it takes 4.184 joules to heat one gram one degree Celsius. So if you had 10 grams and you wanted to heat them one degree Celsius, you could just use the um, specific heat value as a conversion factor here. So grams and degrees Celsius would cancel and you had 10 grams so there should be 10 times as much energy required. So 41.84 joules. Okay, now how much energy is needed to heat 30 grams, so that's a mass, right, from 10 degrees to 50. So this is the initial and this is the final. So we're going to be using our Q equal MC delta T here. Okay, delta T is T final minus T initial, so 50 minus 10 is 40, so there's delta T. M is the mass, so you got 30. Uh, C, still water, so we're still going to use 4.184, and then we just found delta T to be 40. Okay, if you multiply all those across, you will get the uh, energy required to heat 30 grams of water by 40 degrees Celsius. And I got this, if you sig figged it, it'd be that. Okay, so 5,020 joules. Alright, so when the Q is negative, it means that we are releasing heat, so that's an exothermic process. When the Q is positive, like on the last problem, it means heat is absorbed, which is endothermic. Okay, so remember thinking about, you know, going um, this way, you're, you know, you're thinking about going down, and this one you're thinking about going up the heat curve. Delta T is always going to be final minus initial temperature, so if something is getting hotter, going from 10 to 30 degrees, the delta T is going to be 30 minus 10, which is positive 20. So the heat is absorbed. So that's a endothermic. And if something is getting cooler, going from 75 to 25 degrees, the delta T is going to be 25 minus 75, so negative 50, which means heat is released. Okay?